Bharatiya Skill Development University is a venture of renowned Rajendra and Ushila Joshi Charitable Trust. It is first Indian university to offer only skill-based programs and has established itself as a leading education provider with prime focus on holistic skills training based on Swiss dual system using machinery and equipments procured from best manufacturers all across the globe. This is a glimpse of the School of Automotive Skills, which is the gateway to the world of mobility. The school houses one of the best infrastructure, tools, and equipments, benchmarked with best automotive workshops and training facilities of global standard. You can see students are having hands-on experiences from School of Automotive Skills. These are our industry partners. This is a glimpse of School of Automotive Skills. These are painting workshops being attended by the students. This is our robotics lab. This is the state of art of a lab equipped with latest machineries imported from globally renowned MNCs like ABB and TAL. The lab has been designed with objective of imparting automotive skills, automation skills in line with international standards. The lab is equipped with six robots. This is voice-based cell, including gesture-based cell, pick and place vision, pick and place from ABB, and welding robot from ABB. This is 3D printing lab. The lab has nine 3D printers, including four of SLA and five of FFF types. Many materials can be used with these, like ABA, PLA, nylon, etc. 3D printing works, building a product layer by layer. So it's uh, called as additive manufacturing. This is a student project of IoT lab, smart dust mill. Uh, it was uh, very well covered by media. This is PCB designing and manufacturing lab. This is the component mounting section. You are having a view of chemical process and miling machine section from the PCB designing and manufacturing lab. Students have hands-on experiences in these labs. This is School of Electrical Skills. This is a synchronization kit to synchronize two or more than two power supplies. It is a software-based kit which works on SCADA software. This is a team School of Electrical Skills. This is our house wiring lab in which students do hands-on work and prepare job pieces as per their drawings. They learn how to install. These are the tools which are used to carry out any electrical installation work. These are the solar panels of our RET lab in which students can do the live monitoring of the data acquired from the sun and make reports. Here, students are provided project-based learning opportunities. This is a hardware project, which are prepared by our students for their assessments. Various projects prepared by our students. Panel designing. So students having a hands-on skill training. Students, yes, uh, this is a robotics training live. This is glimpse of School of Manufacturing Skills. Training here is supported by state-of-art infrastructure, knowledgeable educators and trainers, and also have a 
potent industry connect these are the skill labs and cnc uh, simulation labs we follow one student one machine concept here based on swiss dual system this is the aerial view of bhartiya skill development university this is the facility of metal construction in which welding and fabrication facility is being provided this is school of uh, refrigeration and air conditioning skills these are the chiller machines these are the part of central air conditioning systems these are used in large spaces like malls hotels and industrial plants these are domestic air conditioning units various student projects and tools so in, on these tools students learn their skills different skills swiss dual system is being uh, followed in bhartiya skill development universities and students are being provided with their practical experiences they are sent for internships every 6 months focus is on practical uh, teaching skill labs so this is a glimpse of school of healthcare which provides occupationally relevant insights from nursing science and its reference sciences a swiss expert is always available in the skill labs every day and practices practical activities with indian teachers and students all materials used in skill labs are of highest quality and each student has to practice all practical activities until he or she is able to do them so uh, we have volunteers and uh, students practice on them teaching in skill labs takes place in groups this means high quality the trainer supervises maximum 5 students together this means that all students get enough time to practice basic life uh, support learning is being provided to all the students so these were the glimpses and these are some of the student projects at bsdu segway which is being prepared by student himself students here experience project based learning this is another student project the sterling engine so thank you all for sparing your valuable time for joining us today bsdu india's first pure skill university is a road to skilling india and i welcome you all to visit physically our campus situated in mahindra world city jaipur which is a key to building a multidisciplinary research led ecosystem of skill education in india now i invite dr shekhar kapoor to moderate the global conversation on skills for youth employment in new normal over to you shekhar sir well thank you ma'am hello good morning good evening good afternoon from whichever part of the world you are logging in today i welcome you all namaskar assalam alaikum and sashri akal I, Dr. Shekhar Kapoor, places my best wishes on the World Youth Skills Day today, and welcome all the students, the participants, faculty members, and all educationalists that have joined with us in today's global conversation on skills for youth employment in the new normal. Proudly hosted by India's first and purely skill-based university, Bharatiya Skill Development University, and the Commonwealth Educational Media Centre for Asia, New Delhi. The global conversation on skills by the eminent panelists members today also supplements to the closing ceremony of the month-long BSU Skill Carnival, 
which began on the 21st of june 2021 and involved a plethora of skill activities including skill workshops panel discussions expert webinars video making competitions e quiz on global ecosystems and much much more and was jointly organized by bharatiya skill development university jaipur and the commonwealth educational media center for asia new delhi in today's time when the second wave of covid-19 is on an upsurge in india and in various part of the world and various challenges and opportunities are emerging in front of us in terms of socio economical and also technological ones and more importantly in the employment and employability skills of students and the people by large particularly in the fast moving world and the changing paradigms and to discuss all these things about skill education and employment in pre and post covid scenario and much more we have with us today the expert panel of leaders and stakeholders from the skill ecosystem across the world who would be sharing their value additions on the theme of global conversation on skills for youth employment in the new normal ladies and gentlemen please join me in welcoming our esteemed panel of experts with us today first and foremost i would like to welcome our first esteemed panelist member mr marcus gimainer sir the honorable ceo rajendra and ursula joshi foundation the jcf mr marcus gimainer started his career with joshi foundation already in 2013 as an advisor one year later as head of the project management and since 2018 he is the ceo of jcf he is responsible and in charge of several skill development projects in india one of the outstanding projects in india is the bharatiya skill development university which started from summer 2015 as a training campus in the form of bsgc and was transformed in 2017 to one of the first skill development universities in india the bsdu the aim of jcf is to build up a new skills model for india in vocational training based on the experience of the swiss dual system mr marcus has a post graduate diploma in international business and general management and an executive mba in digital transformation he started his professional career as a cabinet maker and made his master and engineer in woodworks later he changed to the professional field of mechanical engineering and spent more than 12 years as a consultant for vocational education and training for industries and vocational schools we welcome you mr marcus gimainer sir in our today's global conversation on skills for youth employment in the new normal welcome sir namaskar thank you thank you dr shaykhan for the warm welcome thank you very much well, yeah. well th thank you sir i would also like to welcome our next eminent panelist member professor madhu parhar ma'am director commonwealth education media center for asia new delhi commonwealth education media center for asia or semca is an international organization established by the commonwealth of learning as its regional center for asia in the year 1994 The Commonwealth of Learning is an intergovernmental organization created by the Commonwealth heads of government in 1987 to promote the development and sharing of open learning and distance education knowledge, resources, and technologies with headquarters at Vancouver, Canada. Professor Madhu Parhar, ma'am, joined as the director SEMCA in the year 2019. Prior to that, she was the professor of distance education in staff training and research institute of distance education at IGNU and was appointed as the director of Pride in November 2018. She specializes in education technology and has held a number of roles in IGNU and in other institutions, including the Vavasan Open University at Penang, Malaysia, and was also consulted by UNESCO on various distance education projects. We welcome you, Professor Madhu Parhar, ma'am, in our today's global conversation. हम आपका आज के इस पैनल डिस्कशन वेबिनार में बहुत-बहुत स्वागत करते हैं, ma'am. Thank you so much, Shaker, for that wonderful introduction. Thank you, ma'am. I would now like to welcome our next eminent panelist member, Professor Niharika Vora, ma'am, the Honorable Vice Chancellor at Delhi Skill and Entrepreneurship University. 
Professor Niharika Vora, ma'am, after completing her education from Utkal University, Bhubaneswar, and University of Manitoba at Canada, served for almost 22 years as the Professor of Organizational Behavior at the IIM Ahmedabad. She has a long teaching experience at University of Manitoba, Canada, and XIM Bhubaneswar too, where she designed and taught various courses like leadership and team building, applied behavioral sciences, social psychology, to name a few. Professor Niharika Ma'am was also instrumental for her feedbacks to the executives of big corporate giants like Polaris, Satyam, ABB, Infosys, and various others. And she also co-authored, developed, and administered the 360-degree feedback to more than 300 CBSC school principals across the country. We welcome you, Professor Niharika Vora Ma'am, in our today's global conversation. Aaj ki is webinar mein hum aapka hardik swagat karte hai, Ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ma'am. I would now like to invite and welcome our next eminent panelist member, Mr. Janak Jalat Sir, the Deputy Director General at the Tertiary and Vocational Education Commission, Sri Lanka. Since the year 2007, he served the Tertiary and Vocational Education Commission in various roles as the Director General and the Director Information System. He supervised TVEC in policy formulation, planning, quality assurance, coordination and development of Tertiary and Vocational Education in Sri Lanka. Mr. Janak sir has been associated with various organizations in the past like the ICTA University of Vocational Technology Sri Lanka, GIZ and the Asian Development Bank at various positions. We welcome you Mr. Janak Jailat sir in our today's global conversation. Aaj ki is webinar mein hum aapka bahut bahut swagat karte hai, sir. Hi boy. Thank you. Thank you sir. And last but not the least, I would like to welcome our next eminent panelist member for the day, Honorable President BSDU, Dr. and Professor Achintya Chaudhary, sir. Dr. Achintya Chaudhary, sir, obtained his graduation in mechanical engineering from NIT Silchar and MTech and PhD from IIT Kharagpur and IIT Delhi, respectively. He has more than 35 years of work experience in the field of academics, which started with his appointment at NIT Silchar. He also held several positions of academic leadership, including the position of Dean Academics at Sikkim Manipal Institute of Technology, Principal at SNL Engineering College, West Bengal, Dean and Pro Vice Chancellor at Sir Padmavat Singhania University, Udaipur. He currently holds the position of President at Bharatiya Skill Development University, Jaipur, and is involved in the process of imparting skill education to the youth. We welcome you, Dr. Achintya Chaudhary, sir, in our today's global conversation. Aaj ki webinar mein hum aapka hardik swagat karte hai, sir. Thank you so much, Shekhar, for that kind introduction. And welcome to other panelists also, being well, a member of the host institute. Well, thank you so much, sir. To the eminent panelists of leaders and stakeholders from the skill ecosystem across the world that are present with us today, thank you all once again for taking out your time for interacting with our audience. And I, Dr. Shekhar Kapoor, welcome you once again on behalf of Bharatiya Skill Development University, SEMCA, and all the wonderful participants. At the same time, I would like to remind all the participants here that we have accommodated the chosen few of you in the Zoom platform, and this event is being broadcasted live on the Facebook, YouTube, and other social media networks simultaneously. Any questions or queries you wish to ask from our eminent panelist member, you can just raise your hand at the end if you are joining from the Zoom platform, or write them in the chat box if you are joining from other social media networks. We'll take some of the questions at the end. I would now like to invite the Honorable CEO, Rajendra and Ursula Joshi Foundation, Mr. Marcus Giviner, sir, for his inaugural address. We all are waiting to listen to you, sir. Over to you, sir, and welcome once again. Thank you. Thank you again, Dr. Shekhar, for the warm welcome and the nice introduction. Dear co-panelists, dear faculty members, dear students and parents, dear attendees, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Marcus Meiner. I'm the CEO of Joshi Foundation. I would like to extend a warm greeting to everyone on the eve of World Youth Skills Day. 
This World Youth Skills Day lets encourage uh, our youth to learn new skills, to prepare them with the resilience to adapt for the disruptions. So today I'm delighted to celebrate the World Youth Skill Day and the closing ceremony of the BSDU Skill Carnival 2021 together with you. First of all, I want to give you a short overview about our scope of work and the objectives of Joshi Foundation. Is the presentation running, please, Mr. Rajdeep? Yes, thank you. Next, uh, next, please. JCF was founded in 2006 by our belated Dr. Rajendra Kumar Joshi and his wife Ursula Joshi, with the sole aim to transfer the excellent Swiss dual system of vocational education and training, short VET, to India and to build up a new model of skill development. The dual system is the heart of the VET, of the vocational education in Switzerland. It combines practical training and theory in a school plus internship in the industry. In uh, 2050, we inaugurated our first VET project called Baratje Skill Development Campus BSDC. It uh, was our first school and training center for mechanical training. Two years later, we converted the campus BSTC into the university BSDU, the first skill development university in Rajasthan. Since that time, we are a knowledge partner of BSDU and try to support wherever we can. The main task of the JCF is the know-how transfer from Switzerland to India. Next, please. For the transfer of this know-how, we sent Swiss experts to India. Since 2014, we have sent more than 80 experts to Jaipur. Uh, experts with a good professional knowledge in the certain fields and uh, with a good knowledge also in transferring the skills. We support BSDU to build up new courses, but most important is the part of the train the trainer. Next, please. Presently, six project managers, one back, please, uh, and master trainers are on duty for us. Uh, next month, tomorrow will attend. They give their support to following schools. That's the School of Hospitality and Tourism, Automotive Skills, Healthcare and Paramedic Skills, Metal Construction Skills, Manufacturing Skills, Electrical Skills, and last but not least, the Woodworking Skills. Next, please. Beside to train the trainers, uh, we help to modify the curriculum, adopt the syllabus and the teaching learning process to India's culture and uh, to need uh, to meet the needs of the local industry. Further, we set up new training facilities, state of the art, like we've seen in the, at the beginning, the nice movie. High quality training requires latest machines, good equipment and precise tools for the workshop and labs. We help to find the best machines and give our support during installation and training as well. Next, please. Our focus is on following points. 80% practical skills training in the workshop and 20% theory. Quality training without any compromise. Modern machinery and equipment. One student, one machine. This is our slogan and we take it pretty seriously. We provide best safety conditions and uh, sustainability 
means all what we transfer on knowledge will remain. And also soft skills. Not only professional training is important, we ask our trainer to teach the students as well in soft skills like behavior, reliability, endurance, independence, self-control and decision-making. Next, please. Now to the present situation, uh, COVID-19 crisis uh, since March, April, 2020, COVID keeps the world on its toes and has a huge impact also to the education. Of course, I'm glad to hear that students can return since today to uh, the universities. Uh, and, and the second wave is almost finished, hopefully. Of course, we hope it was the last one forever. But uh, during the last year, almost all students have been affected by COVID. That means by the crisis all over the world. I guess all universities were closed for months. Uh, in some cases, homeschooling, homeschooling has not the same output as lessons in the classroom. And practical training was not possible by internet. In view of this situation, a skills gap has been created. Now we must find a solution to fill up the gap, but this needs a special effort, an agreement between university and the affected students and the industry to find a solution. Generally, I would say VT is an important economical topic and should be supported by all the stakeholders. We are looking for closer cooperation with the government, the industry, the skill councils, and also other skill universities. With uh, the government, we want to work on a new skill development system for whole India. I was a member of the Swiss delegation and the first meeting uh, of the Indo-Swiss Joint Working Group held in April 2017 at New Delhi. Hopefully, these sessions will continue somewhere. The industry must be convinced about the benefits of long-term training compared to short-cut courses. Short-term courses keep the employees small and cheap, but the very often the output is also cheap. With qualified staff, the industry will save money at the end. And uh, luckily we have a lot of industry partners so far and they are convinced about our training, about our system. The skill councils are having a good knowledge about the professions and a very good relationship to the ministries and also to the industries. With a closer collaboration, we could use the synergies. Together with other skill universities, we could pull together and take care about the standards in VET. All these steps are required for further improvement of the vocational education and training system in India. Next, please. Finally, we want to empower the youth with skills. We want to give youth opportunities for a successful future. I see a lot of benefits if the youth decides for a BVOC course. With BVOC, you are a professional and you can be proud of it. BVOC is a great foundation for the future and gives great career opportunities. I'm the best example. I've started my career as a cabinet maker. And I know not quite a few fellows which started with an apprenticeship they earn today more than colleagues which took the path of academics. That happens as well. A further big plus point 
is uh, there's a, a huge demand on professionals worldwide. I'm, I'm sure in a few years, Europe, also Switzerland, will search professionals abroad. And last but not least, hands-on professions are fun. Yes, so thank you, everybody. Next, please. Thank you for your attention. And I give the word back to Dr. Srikra. Well, thank you so much, sir, for your valuable address. And uh, with these words, like you have uh, set the tone very rightly for the further discussions. Thank you once again. Uh, we'll be taking the questions at the end. I would now like to invite our next eminent panelist member, Professor Madhu Parhar, ma'am, the Director, Commonwealth Education Media Center for Asia, New Delhi, for her address. Over to you, ma'am, and welcome once again. Thank you so much. So, um, firstly, uh, when I was, when Saurabh, my colleague from SEMCA, and um, colleagues from the BSGU, they said, come and present it on, on today, this give a talk. So I was just wondering, I told Saurabh that um, I will do a PowerPoint presentation. He said, um, no, it is a talk. Uh, you, you have to talk because everyone will be talking and it's like a talking webinar. I said, no. So I was confused. I, I thought what to do if everyone is just speaking and I do a PowerPoint presentation, then I will be, be standing out or um, I will like a fool. But then Saurabh agreed very, very smartly. He said, okay, you can do it. So uh, I'll start and I'm happy Marcus uh, began with uh, his slides. So I'm safe now. So uh, let me just share the slides. I hope these are visible. Yes, ma'am. Okay, fine. So um, all my co-panelists for today's global conversation on skills for youth employment in under the new norms, all the participants who are attending almost uh, more than 150 who are attending this uh, webinar, colleagues from BSGU University, and um, my colleague Saurabh from SEMCA. So firstly, I mean, as um, Marcus gave a brief introduction of what they are doing, a brief introduction on what SEMCA is. SEMCA is an intergovernmental organization, our head office in uh, Canada, Vancouver, Commonwealth of Learning. So main objective of Commonwealth of Learning is imparting quality education, especially open and distance education. So we work, SEMCA work, SEMCA is uh, uh, an, uh, or, or I should say an um, office which caters to the eight Commonwealth countries in Asia, whereas Commonwealth of Learning, which is in Vancouver, works with 52 Commonwealth countries in the world, which covers Asia, Caribbean, um, and Europe, and so on. But we, in SEMCA, we work in the eight Commonwealth countries, and India is a big country. Of course, there are two other major countries, Bangladesh and Pakistan, if we talk about the population-wise, as compared to where we work in Maldives, Singapore, um, Brunei, those are smaller countries. So we have an upper edge and we have to cater to these countries. And of course, Sri Lanka, we have uh, our expert here, my panelists, co-panelists from Sri Lanka also. So we are working with these eight countries. Now, moving to the, what the theme of this webinar is, skills. So all of us, we know skill is the buzzword these days. And today, our prime minister also talked about the skills, um, congratulating everyone on the World Skills Day. So very uh, recently, last month, we uh, celebrated the International Yoga Day, and which was also by the United Nations. 
um, today, 15th of July, we are celebrating World Youth Skills Day. And according to the UN, again, it is a, a saying or a quote from the UN, because the UN only has given 15 July as a World Youth Skills Day. And what they said, why we are celebrating this Youth Skills Day is to celebrate the strategic importance of equipping young people. So I'm highlighted in red, young people, if they have talked about this, and that, that's what you and I have talked about that, with skills for employment, decent work, and entrepreneurship. So my emphasis, or all of us, we should need to think about the young people. So if we talk about young people, what is the definition of young people? Uh, in this today's world, we will say a 60 years old is also young. And of course, a young is, um, if we see the definition, maybe after 10 or 12 years or 18 years, we say uh, young. So that's what it. And young, if we say otherwise, it can be those who are in school education, those who are in higher education, like both the universities, one in BHDU and another is the Delhi Skill University, and both the vice chancellors are here today present. So young is also those who are in the higher education. And we all know India is a young population. So all of us, we are hopping. We are using that uh, a lot that India is a young population. And with um, and all of you, you know, again, the population of India is 136 crore. That is the Indian population. Out of that, 35.6 approximately uh, crore people are in the age group of 10 to 24. So 10 to 24, which will include school education as well as the higher education. And as we said, it means almost 54 percentage of the total population is below 25 years. And that's why India is always talking about that India is a young country. So a young country with young people. Now, coming to all of you, you know, I don't have to repeat it, but still I thought maybe it will be good for each one of us to understand, especially our participants, like Skill India, as skill is a buzzword, and Skill India is an initiative launched by the present government in 2015 to train, again, see the numbers. We are talking about numbers here. 40 crore Indians in different industry-related jobs. So in my opinion, as far as my understanding goes, the Skill India initiative has talked about 40 crore Indians in different industry-related jobs. So what about the school education and the higher education? What about their training? What about their education? This is, for me at the moment, is a need to answer this question. Of course, uh, all of us, we know what are the various policies uh, which the present government has given us on the skill. Uh, the, they framed the first policy, national policy on skill development and entrepreneurship 2015. Then came before that, the national skill development policy was there. And then in 2015, again, there was a national skill development mission. Now, what are we are talking about skills and skills and skills all the time. So what are the skills of the 21st century? All of us, again, we know, and we are talking about skills of 21st century, and we are in the third decade of the 21st century. We have started with the 20, almost six months have already gone into the uh, third decade of the 21st century skills. So many of us, we are talking, especially uh, all of us, those who are in education, and you have, all of you, you have an added advantage that you are talking about also, education and skills. Person like me, I'm just talking about education because my background is education. So we are talking about what is the skills of the 21st century. What are the uh, what are what are the 21st century learners? There are clearly defined definitions of what are the 21st century learners. One can go into the internet and they, one can find it out. So we will not get into the learners basically. What will be the 21st century classrooms? 
what will the 21st century teachers look like so all together a lot of literature is available but if you are talking about the skills skills in the 21st century we in the education sector all of us we know we talk about uh, bloom's taxonomy and bloom's taxonomy talks about cognitive affective and the psychomotor but another classification or another categorization of skills in 21st century is done as cognitive skills uh, which of course bloom's all bloom has already talked about social norm, emotional skills which bloom bloom has said as an affective skill technical skills bloom has named it as psychomotor skills this has been added very recently because everything in in the it digital became the, the 21st century was revolutionized by digital skills the digital everything the digital so this has been added maybe when boom wrote the taxonomy of um, education digital was not there so he didn't write or he didn't explain the digital skills but now these digital skills are the most important of the 21st century skills now according to the um, world economic forum 2020 report actually i made these slides because i wanted to show these two slides one is this another one was that otherwise even i would have spoken just from uh, from uh, just just tempo but this is a very important slide and all of you those who are and all of you you are till side we know what are the top 10 skills of 2025 and is be given by the world economic forum these are the skills how much time is left kitna samay reh gaya 2025 ko jar sirf 4 saal reh gaye only 4 years are we thinking of these skills and if we see analytical thinking i was never taught in neither in the school nor in higher education that how do i think is thinking a uh, a skill which can be learned what i know and what i i can learn thinking yes it can be there are several websites where you can go and learn uh, the, the thinking part of it the thinking component complex problem solving never i was never taught or never any uh, i mean i never knew when i did my schooling or my higher education that what are the complex problem solving skills leadership skills social influence each one of us not only leaders as i am heading semca or the vice chancellor is heading skill universities or any other formal universities each one of us we are leaders those skills are very very essential technology design program resilience very important stress tolerance the whole world is stress these days especially post pandemic reasoning ideation so these are the top 10 skills of 2025 are we imparting these skills in school education or in higher education question to be asked among ourselves now again what world economic forum has said talked about that the job landscape will change completely in 2025 again this is 2025 we are seeing in the last 2 3 years only once the automation has come right so we need not get into the the previous one future we have not seen but the future has been predictive that what will be the job landscape the landscape will be that 85 million people will lose job in these areas decreasing job demands because of the machines because because humans and the machines are going to affect this so 85 million will lose jobs or decrease job demands in these areas like the data entry clerks the accounts and the auditors the assembly and the factory workers all these are there maybe you all can go to the internet and read this detailed report of the world uh, economic forum but it has predicted the report has predicted 85 million will lose jobs in these areas but there will be 97 million new jobs amazing i mean i really hats off to uh, these people those who do such predictive studies that what will be the job demands now big data specialists 
we have so much of data on on uh, for the students and one example simple we are using amazon each one of us we are using they have so much of data and they are so forward they they analyze the big data they have specialists in big data and there are a lot of job demands in such industries for us educationists in schools or in colleges we have so much of data on the students but we don't know what to do with this student data so big data specialists will be needed digital transformation specialists will be needed and we need to see what what these are i am not also aware of so many what what will be they doing and it is just a broad area in between if we go if we enter into e job demand and it will be further further categorized like if if we see in the health sector we say not only um, um cancer expert it is stomach cancer expert gastro ex ca expert or thoracic ca expert or medical ca expert and so that's what the specialization has come to so in this also these job demands there must be several several uh, specializations uh, internet of things uh, and so on and so forth so see the landscape of job how it has changed now what to do the question is what to do if we talk about the young people and young people in the education those who are still in the schools or in the universities i am not talking about the in service people in service category is definitely because you one has to upgrade their skills that's the demand uh lifelong learning what what has to be done so if we simply talk about what the what what our universities or the formal system or the skill universities or open universities have to do this is i mean i just mentioned four points we need to see our courses and when i check some of the courses on the skill universities both delhi skill and the rajasthan you have some of those courses which are catering to the future job demands right so we have to say we have to find out what courses we need to frame that's very very important what should be the curriculum are these curriculum domain specific or are we building the soft skills into it very important question so what we do is can we reframe our curriculum is there a need to reframe the curriculum that's the most important point so on one hand which courses which will be demand teen saal ke baad 20 25 aa gaya aadha nikal jayega pandemic mein aadha waise hi nikal jayega 2025 is just as as at the door so hum abhi isko nahi dekhenge so we need to define what new courses we have to have how we change our curriculum most important i mean not most important it is one of the important the transaction the teaching learning how do we do it in schools i was looking at the video very well prepared uh, by the the skill university bsgu that was i think catering to face to face right last year march pandemic came and suddenly everything was haywire no one knew what to do but very quickly each one of us whether we say educational institutions we say heads of the organizations we say the teachers we say the students we picked up online learning and teaching learning was like transacted through online learning but again people started questioning uh the theory you can teach uh, uh, but what about the skill part in online very important pertinent question people are raising and last is how do you do the assessment of skill part or otherwise also so these are the just you can add many other points into it but i thought these are just four points major we need to see how do we change ourselves in this new normal so these has to be changed now now we have to embed employability skills how do you embed employability skills so these are few points i will just skip through it because um, 
uh, because I have taken much more time. So skill can be embedded into the learning outcomes. Learning outcomes, each one of us, we are taught, again, using the Bloom's taxonomy. And all of you, you must be using those learning outcomes. So skills has to be embedded in these learning outcomes. We need to identify the content area. So that's what, that's what we have to do it. Develop assessment tasks. What sort of assessment tasks we are doing it? Very nicely, smartly, your video depicted that projects are given to the students. Students, they do the projects. And that's the right assessment task which each university has to do, right? So th that's what it, we have to develop the assessment task. And then design teaching and learning activities that will enhance students to learn and practice these skills very important practicing like a plumber or an electrician unless and until he or she knows the plumbing skills or electrical skills cannot do it automobile you have already listed that unless and until the students is in the in the lab or in the skill um, classroom unless and until he or she is practicing cannot do it so these are some of the things where how you can embed employability skills in the curriculum. Just one or two more slides and then I will end. Now talking about, because we are talking about post pandemic and the new normal and the new normal is online learning or we can say open and distance education, which is my field. So if we talk about open and distance education, just simply be a history or a geography or any other subject, there are not much experiments or not practicals, but skill courses, as in one of the slides, it said 70% skill, 30% theory. So what skill courses basically includes is theory plus employability skills or the skills we were talking about. So what should be the 21st century courses? I do not get, need not get into the detail machine learning, data visualization, blockchain, data analytics, quantum computing, and so on are the courses. Mm -hmm. How do you transact? Theory can be transacted by reading the learning material. Theory can be learned by just watching a video, right? But some of the skills also one can do it. And I always love to give the example of we women, we watch the cooking um, uh, shows on the television or on the YouTube. So what are we doing? We are learning a skill to bake a cake. So we, we just watch and then we go to the kitchen and we do that. That's a skill. I think since last 30 years when I was young, uh, this, this program, Krishi Darshan, used to broadcast on DD, DD Network. And since then, that, that, that broadcast is going on where farmers learned the farming through this, this, uh, this media. So it means one can learn the skills through these media. People need not uh, worry about that. We cannot learn skills through online or nothing can be done. But yes, certain skills has to be learned, which are the practical skills on the skill centers under a supervision. That part I agree, and that's what percentage we have to see. Can be 30%, uh, 70%, uh, whatever it is. But again, that can be done, but we need to find out innovative ways. Like suppose a plumber, a student who is doing a plumbing course, doing certain plumbing skills, can take a video, send it to Shaker, that please evaluate me now based on based on what the video has said. It can be through WhatsApp, it can be email, whatever it is. And then check her what we'll do, see the video, whether the person has is doing the plumbing skills properly or not, and give a feedback. So there are several ways which can be done these days, but it just needs an innovation. Last one, one slide. So what are, what are the online solutions? What are an online solutions are? We, we should have a blended higher education. Uh, second point I will uh, emphasize on micro-credentials. Micro-credentials is, is a new innovation, not very new, but I want to give an example. 
micro credentials are being used by several industry and one of the industry is this dominoes who make pizza and second industry is which make these oreo biscuits and and this has been not i don't know whether it has been done in india or not they have did but internationally what they do dominoes they are creating videos not for 1 minute not for 10 minutes not for 15 minutes not for half an hour only 45 seconds 45 second video that is how to knead the dough for a pizza how to cut vegetables another video how to cut vegetables for the pizza so an employee in the domino uh, dominos pizza or the center what they are doing is whenever they get a time they watch this videos and these are called micro nuggets sort of a thing nugget all of you you know and that's what from the word has come so what you are doing what these all these industry people what they are doing is that employees in service employees especially they what they are doing is they are collecting these micro credentials and gaining one uh, one certificate or learning one skill that's the the future what we talk about micro credentials government of india ugc is also started talking about and they have already said i don't know whether still universities are doing or not they said 40% of all courses uh, you you can take from swam so what is swam swam is actually an online learning so in skill sector i am not aware whether the skill universities have allowed it or not but micro credentials is the future and simple example is if i am doing a ba course like for example b walk and it is of let's say 80 credit course i will do over a period of time let's say 2 years and i don't have to go to a classroom i will earn 90 cre or 80 credits or 90 credits from various universities um and i will go to bsdu and i'll say hey i am shaker i have done 80 credits give me a certificate of b walk now so this is the future how we are going to do the the education change in the new normal which was today's discussion point and my last slide is let's explore more we should explore more and how it can be done the the field is vast how it can be done is all depends upon our innovation and how do we do it because skilling has to be done 40 crore people has to be trained and that is in service people have to be trained for, in my opinion and students those who are school and in um, higher education they need a different kind of a training thank you so much well thank you so much ma'am for your insightful address and i am pretty much sure that your address or marcus sir address or the words that would be spoken by a uh, eminent panelist member would be going a long long way thank you ma'am at this point i would also like to acknowledge the presence of uh, our director sir chairman sir jain joshi sir govind sharma sir the ex chief at national research development corporation new delhi dr akali sema professor and dean nagaland university who are present with us i welcome all of you they are a constant support to our ecosystem also adm sir west sikkim rohan sir is present with us i acknowledge your presence also and the kestiot komani sir the project manager school of healthcare skills alfred blatter sir project manager school of electrical skills dr b k jha sir Uh, dr mushtaq ahmed sir all the principals deans that are present present with us i acknowledge all your presence thank you very much for all your constant support to our skill ecosystem and bsdu next moving forward i would now like to welcome our next eminent panelist member professor niharika vohra ma'am the honorable vice chancellor at delhi skill and entrepreneurship university for her valuable address over to you ma'am and welcome once again thank you um all right uh thank you so much uh, dr kapoor for the invite and all the uh, members of the panel and the audience uh i think dr madhu has already spoken most of things that i wanted to say but let me add a few things so that i can um, uh you know i i just want to 
uh, from a perspective of a, of a uh, of a vice chancellor who's trying to set up a university where um, we are making we're wanting to change the narrative of the country about skills mm -hmm. uh, as of today we have always as of you know not today but uh, even in the current context uh, skills are thought to be something that is only uh, for gray and blue collar workers uh, skills are something that you can possibly get in a very short period of time, it is treated as a transaction, something that you can possibly learn for about three to six months, which is what has been the process for everything. And skills are something only for something that can be done uh, that are routine in nature. And and as of now, and and from the presentation of Dr. Prahar, it is very clearly for her. It is very clearly that uh, clear that. Honestly, the uh, 21st century skills are not just that. Yeah, they're not just routine. They're not just gray and blue collar work. And 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 skills, by definition, include something that uh, to be skilled is to have judgment and discernment. And you can only develop judgment and discernment when you do something well and you do something for a long period of time. So I might learn the process of, you know, maybe um, from watching a YouTube video of how to how to maybe, um, you know, fix a bicycle, uh, but to be able to fix the bicycle in a way that, uh, you know, no matter what the issue is, I will be able to fix it and to recognize that this requires this much more tightening or this does not require this much more tightening requires prolonged exposure uh, and uh, a certain level of reflection and abstraction on the work that I do. And I think what, of, um, uh, what I'm trying to say is that for any, uh, at, uh, at DSCU, we are saying, let us define skilling as something that requires a prolonged level of immersion. That means you have to do a degree in it. It's not something that you can do out of a short program and you can't uh, do, um, you know, we went, I went to visit a uh, ITI where the, uh, there was a student who was uh, learning how to do AC repair. She was already making money as while she was a student because there were people who were calling her for AC repair. And I asked her, what else are you doing? And she's doing a BA history in a school of open learning in Delhi, right? What is the meaning? Yeah, why, why should she do that? Uh, she is neither doing her AC repair too well, nor is she doing her BA history too well. Uh, and why are you doing a degree? Because um, I have to have a degree. Uh, and why are you doing AC repair? Because I have to make money. Yeah. Uh, now, my point is, why can't we just combine the two, right? Why can't we make the degree and what you do in the same field? Uh, and, and that is why, uh, you know, the whole idea of BWOC came into existence. But BWOC has its own set, uh, set of problems. And fortunately, UGC now allows for skill embedded programs. And you could do a skill embedded program in pretty much anything. You could do a BA um, history and tourism, you could do a BA uh, in beauty and aesthetics, you could do a BA in leatherworks. Uh, it's up to you, how, you know, what kind of uh, bachelor's degree you want to have. And those skill embedded programs will, in fact, be also okay for people to do masters, for people to do PhDs in that same field. And as we all know, that, uh, you know, at the end of the day, there are a lot of people who would like to have higher opportunities for higher education. And even today, if I want a faculty for my program, I can't simply take somebody who's a BTEC. I want somebody who's a master's. I want somebody who has a PhD. And that PhD might be in a field that is not related to what I'm teaching. So as a result, what I'm saying is it is imperative that we create skill-based, skill-embedded degrees. And those skill-embedded degrees cannot simply be on learning the technicality of the field that you're doing. As 
Professor Parar was saying, it is also important that we learn some of what we are calling the whatever level skills. You want to call them 21st century skills, you want to call them employability skills, you want to call them whatever skills, but these are the skills that make you more relevant to working in the industry and to living your life. Critical thinking is not only important for industry, it is important for us to live our life. Uh, critical um, problem solving uh, is not something that you only need to be employable. You need to also do your live your life better. So I think the living life skills such as negotiation, collaboration, um, learning where to come compete systems thinking, critical thinking, design thinking are skills that have to be embedded in every degree program because fortunately or unfortunately, as of today, many of these skills are not being taught in schools. Schools have become as of yet, and maybe someday that will also change. Uh, schools today are mostly about rote learning and um, uh, reproducing what you have learned. Uh, at least at the university, we have to move away from it. And one of the things that we have decided that we will do to move away from it is completely move away from the midterm, end term evaluation process and say we will have to do continuous evaluation. And the, um, the way you should the only time you can pass a course is when you have attained competence at whatever you are looking at and not because you have attained 40% marks in that area or 70% marks in that area. So marks should only reflect the level of competence that one has reached. Uh, these are all very, very difficult things to do. Even today, while we were having a conversation, we are having a um, a curriculum advisory group to look at the curriculum of MLT, Medical Lab Technology, and the teachers who have been teaching in this area for the last 20 years uh, simply bolted, said, how can you teach testing first? You must teach them immunosuppressing systems and blah, blah, or the anatomy and the physiology first for the first 18 months. Then only they should touch a machine. Yeah. And, and uh, to get them to accept that you could flip it, that you could first learn testing and, and you could get good at it to be in a, so good at it that you would be curious to understand why this happens and therefore learn the theory on its own is a humongous task, right? So maybe somebody who is 24 years old and is entering the, um, the medical lab technology field would be okay for us to start tinkering with the machine first. But for somebody who's already taught for 24 years, that flip is, I can see, very difficult to achieve. So we had such a long conversation just trying to convince them it's also okay to learn this way, not just this way, right? And um, and they were saying, we will write to the medical council, how can you teach this? How can you not do this? And so on and so forth. I mean, it was, it was a very, very, uh, you know, each side thought that they were saying the right thing. Um, so again, I'm all I'm trying to say is that uh, it's a very, uh, it's easy for us to design a course and say, this is what we will do. It is easy for the country to say, we will skill 40 million people in the next, you know, five years. Uh, but to really do it uh, is a totally different game. Hmm? And I'm only saying that it can only happen if uh, the educators start to understand the, uh, the, uh, the challenge in flipping this, it can only happen when the industry starts to pay a premium for skill. You can't have somebody who's skilled and be treated at par with somebody who just walked into your door and has, a, has just passed out of class 10. There has to be a premium for skill and you have to have students to also make the change that I am not just studying to somehow pass time and then you know then it is my right because i have passed 3 years in the college to now get a job we also have to change that uh, at the end of the day as you know um, uh, our earlier speaker marcus was saying only if you learn something well and you learn something 
you know, deeply is when you actually grow in it. So I think all three of us, all of the three of the stakeholders need to have a complete mindset change. Um, and COVID, no COVID, future, no future. I think we, uh, if we really want a skilled workforce, if we really want people who enjoy what they do and not right after finishing a degree say, well, I was never interested in this. I only wanted to do X, Y, Z. Uh, I think they, all of us have to work together. And, and the parents of these children also will have to come on our side. Um, we, I think every stride, like when BSDU sets up BSDU, it makes a difference. It starts to change the narrative a little bit. When we are doing what we are doing at DSCU, we are hoping to change the narrative to some extent. And hopefully many more will join us, even from the traditional universities, and will convert their you know, their uh, entire education process to skilling rather than to simply teaching some abstract subject. Um, that is my hope. And that is what I would like to make as a, um, as a, what shall I say, um, a mandate to all educators. I will stop here. Thank you very much. Happy to answer any questions. Well, thank you so much, ma'am, for your valuable address on the very important, the most important day for all of us, the World Youth Skills Day. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, moving forward, uh, we'll take the questions at the end, ma'am. Uh, moving forward, I would now like to welcome our next eminent panelist member, Mr. Janak Jailat, sir, the Deputy Director General at the Tertiary and Vocational Education Commission from Sri Lanka. Over to you, sir, and welcome once again. Muted, sir. Uh, please unmute your mic, sir. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's okay. Mr. Okay. Janak Jalad, sir. Yes. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you for the nice introduction. And uh, actually, I was fortunate to be in the panel and uh, thank you very much for inviting me. So uh, my presentation uh, uh, made easier with this uh, background knowledge of, of skills, which uh, we had uh, different uh, prominent pan uh, panel of uh, skills and uh, that made my uh, presentation easier. Uh, and uh, I would like to share my screen. Uh, actually, July 15th is a very important day for me as well as the world because a uh, special day for me because uh, I, I wrote, I was fortunate to write the concept paper for the world. World Skills Day, and uh, and with various propagandas and uh, various uh, diplomatic uh, reaches, our president was able to propose this date in 2014 December in UN General Assembly, and uh, this date is the is very much related to the skills because July 15th is the day because we have uh, established a university of vocational technology, special university for vocational technology, first time in Sri Lanka. Uh, in July 15, the first batch of students uh, conferred, the, conferred the degrees of uh, vocational uh, streams. That's uh, how July 15 came into effect. And uh, I think uh, I'm going to share some of the experiences that we had uh, during the, the new normal situation, but how we are going to cater to the Tibet and skills development in Sri Lanka. And uh, uh, in uh, I am attached to the Tertiary and Vocational Education Commission, which is the quality assurance regulatory uh, uh, and uh, apex body for Tibet in Sri Lanka. 
under the Ministry of Skills Development, uh, Vocational uh, Training, Innovation, uh, Research and Innovation. And uh, during the, the pandemic times, we were actually tried very hard, but only 50% was uh, able to uh, make the Tibet uh, through online. That was uh, our uh, sorrow and uh, we felt li like uh, we cannot deliver this uh, in online uh, mediums. So I will uh, explain what are the challenges and how we uh, overcome the situation. And uh, because TVT is a uh, TVT is changing continuously because of the labor market. And uh, whenever labor market changes, it changes. And uh, also TVT needs a larger investments because uh, we need to invest uh, not like the general education or university education. We in should invest a lot in equipment and various other facilities. And uh, the skilling, the uh, we face the skills, uh, how to deliver the skills. And actually, uh, through online learning, we can uh, deliver some of the things, uh, but uh, not the 100% skills. So with the, the interaction, with the, the pandemic situation, we have, uh, we have had different discussions and how we going to cater. And we have to, uh, the, first of all, we have to take all the, the health and safety issues. We have to address those. And we uh, were designing various boards and uh, various safety precautions in the system. These are some of the boards that uh, was uh, that were kept in the centers. Uh, and uh, we uh, were able to put some local initiatives. Like we started some uh, local TV channels, uh, YouTube TV channels, and uh, various uh, uh, other supporting materials and complementary e-material. As the first step, uh, we were able to uh, uh, give some complementary e-material through WhatsApp and various other means. And uh, we have come up with some e-learning platforms, mostly with uh, uh, free and open source, uh, this Moodle uh, platform. And uh, the, as the, the third step, we come up with a blended learning model. Uh, I'm going to explain uh, what we have done with the blended learning uh, later. And uh, also we uh, had the challenge of uh, the capacity of our trainers because they were not uh, here to uh, deliver these lessons through online uh, learning, online delivery. And uh, we were uh, trying very hard to train the trainers first. And also the practical, in practical scenarios, we had to take precautionary steps to have a one meter distance. So we were trying to get uh, actually one third of the student population into the, the practical labs. And uh, in the blended learning scenario, uh, the, that is actually the student-centered system. So students, uh, they have access to various uh, uh, online learning, e-learning, uh, practicals, and uh, uh, exercises. And uh, there are uh, some uh, AR and VR applications that are coming up uh, to get the real experience of uh, hands-on training. But uh, uh, actually, our trainers are not geared to this level, but we are trying uh, hard and we are trying to uh, give these skills for them. And uh, we have developed a roadmap for the distance learning and how to uh, come up with uh, the blended learning strategy uh, with leadership and planning and uh, how to build uh, the learning culture in the institutes uh, and the ICT facilities, access and connectivity. These are the, the challenges actually we are facing. Uh, trainer training on e-learning and uh, development and implementation uh, and quality assurance. Uh, as the APEX body, we are liable to, uh, yeah, we are responsible for the quality assurance. And uh, quality assurance aspects, 
uh, we have come up with uh, the quality assurance of online learning programs in 2008, but it was not used. At uh, this pandemic times, we were able to use it for various courses because they have uh, geared and they have converted their courses into online uh, knowledge contents and uh, how to develop e-learning as an integral part of the EBT courses and uh, supporting online and uh, micro uh, credentials as uh, we heard earlier. And uh, ILO has uh, provided a very good uh, framework how, how to protecting workers at the workplace because uh, we are fo mainly focusing on uh, on the job training and uh, employment and how to protect workers in the workplace and simulating the economy and labor demand and supporting employment and incomes. This is the framework that were uh, that was uh, embedded and we are trying to uh, go with uh, this model and actually putting some of the, the, the activities aligned with uh, these kind of uh, programs. Uh, the first is the strengthening the operation health and safety. So how to make safety uh, and adapt some of the working arrangements, how to make a bubble works, how to uh, create a bubble within a, a production environment or the working environment and uh, prevent distrib uh, discrimination and exclusion and uh, health taxes. And uh, also uh, we were trying to give some uh, the, uh, the monetary support for the families and uh, financial support for the specific sectors and uh, also the social protection, short time work, paid leave and uh, shift basis work, work from home. These are the things that we have been uh, providing to the, the working crowd. And uh, as the challenges, actually uh, the Tibet is a very uh, hard framed the training system. We were very, uh, it was very difficult to get this system flexible enough to deliver online e-learning and blended learning models. And also demand responsive because during the, the period, uh, most of the demand for jobs uh, have been changed because ICT and healthcare sector went up and other most of the sectors went down. So the demand for jobs uh, keep on changing because of the pandemic. And we were faced difficulty in placing the on job training and uh, accommodating uh, the numbers that we are expecting to do because uh, the employment and the industry, uh, they limit the numbers in their industries. So we were facing very difficult situation. And transport facilities also a, a, a main challenge and uh, uh, safety and health uh, was changed and we need uh, to train our trainers according to the requirements for pandemic period. And uh, additional cost uh, definitely uh, were involved in the systems. And uh, not only challenges, we, uh, there are so many opportunities came up with the pandemic because uh, most of the paper-based material that we have been using, we were, it was very easy to change to the online systems because nobody can move and uh, to uh, go with the documents. And uh, we were able to put most of the, the uh, electronic systems during the, the time and uh, working from home and uh, training resources. Now we are trying to develop some online uh, training material, video based material and platforms and uh, Tibet content like the social media, YouTube and Facebook. Now increasingly uh, the, the students and teachers are increasingly use these materials. And uh, also the teaching learning system has changed uh, drastically. And uh, uh, because the student gets more, more and more technology uh, and uh, they come to technology savvy, there are, there are some uh, drawbacks as well, but uh, we have to see the, the positive side of that. And uh, as the way forward, uh, we need to innovate because uh, if we 
through the the earlier uh, the the traditional systems we cannot uh, deliver uh, we have to keep on innovating the tibet and various other systems how to deliver the 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 flexible uh, kind of uh, blended learning and how to uh, uh, make a policy because we have to uh, make the policies uh, change and uh, how to make inclusive tibet inclusive access because uh, we need to cater for disabled and other sectors vulnerable sectors in the, the society and uh, we need to keep on uh, innovating things and catering these uh, things with the digital online digital content distance supported virtual libraries and uh, all the online uh, resources and uh, also we have started uh, the programs for returning migrants because a lot of migrants returned to sri lanka again so we need to address that we are going uh, we are doing separate project for them and uh, we have issued this skills passport which was very recent the last year skills day uh, we uh, launched this skills passport and uh, how to change the job fields because some of the the sectors like tourism they went uh, to zero income level because then we have to we want need to innovate what are the the various other alternatives likewise uh, we have been innovating the system uh, we don't know what will happen uh, tomorrow but uh, we are trying to cater the today's uh, uh, challenges that's how uh, we have uh, come up with the Uh, the way forward so i must thank you very much i am uh, almost finished thank you well thank you so much sir for your valuable address and here i would also like to uh, well uh, welcome and mention the names of some of the eminent personalities that are present uh, with us today uh, we welcome advocate anil kumar sir petra ma'am from switzerland the deputy director of rsee uh, from shiksha sankul department jaipur uh, shishir chandra bhaduri sir the dean sir and all the eminent educationalists that have joined us in our today's program and ladies and gentlemen uh, lastly but not the least i would now like to welcome our last eminent panelist member for the day honorable president bsdu dr and professor achintya choudhary sir for his valuable address Welcome, sir, and over to you. Thank you, Shikhar, once again, uh, and my hearty greetings to my co-panelists as well as all the participants on this World Your Skill Day, 2021. Uh, we are all aware World Your Skill Day. Uh, I think my previous speaker, Mr. Jayarat, also mentioned. that uh, it started from uh, celebrating uh, world your skill day from 2015 onwards when united nations declared july 15th as world your skill day identifying the need for empowering the youth population for which skills for better employment and entrepreneurship but it is not only employment but it is more important is employability employability has to be improved that is what is the purpose of skilling the today's topic is uh, skills for youth in uh, youth and uh, employment in new normal last two years previous year in 2020 the theme that uh, united nations had given for the world youth skill day was uh, skills for resilient youth and for this year it is reimagining your skills post pandemic so united nations has mentioned that in the first year in 2020 we were quite scared with the uh, that global pandemic and we hoped that the youth the strength of the youth will be resilient enough to come out of this uh, adverse effect of the pandemic and can take us forward and this year we are confident that yes they have bounced back and so we can think of reimagining the youth skills which will take this world forward and in that context 
obviously the topic that uh, our organizers have set for us is skills for youth employment in new normal is very very pertinent this day also marks the as uh, the moderator has already mentioned that uh, it also marks the end of a carnival that bsdu and semca jointly organized for almost last few weeks starting from 21st of june and which will culminate on this great day the world youth skill day uh, i would also like to before i forget i would also like to congratulate the organizing team from my own university bsdu and semca for this great event which in fact has been a global event uh, because maybe the technology and to some extent i mean every uh, everything whatever vice it has it also has some virtue so i do not know maybe if it was not a pandemic whether all the events would have been organized through online mode and whether the event would have been a global all the events would have been a global events because there are several events where participants from all across the globe participated shared their knowledge and we were benefited from those delivery as it is happening today also we have two panelists one from switzerland another from uh, sri lanka and two more from different parts of the country thank you all for making this uh, global event a success all those who had participated the today's talk if we discuss the skills for youth employment in new normal already my previous speakers have made my job easier because most of the topics that can be covered has been covered by them dr parihar has mentioned and we are all aware that in india the skill has been considered the importance of the skill has been considered because india is a young nation that is how we define our country because we have a very large young population but it is also important that at a young population empowering that young population so that they can get employment they become employable and that is what is the purpose of skilling dr parihar has also given a very detailed definition of uh, skills various job roles or classifications of skills but in a very nutshell i think skill basically means excelling in practice whatever it is i mean there could be various aspects but excelling in practice you can have knowledge but when you when you say you are skilled it means you can apply that knowledge and you can excel in that knowledge uh, uh, the for my indian uh, uh, participants we understand the language of cricket very well so i may can say that very sarvadhikari was very knowledgeable in the field of cricket he is he was a, uh, or maybe these days harsh bhogle but the very sarvadhikari may not be known to my younger uh, participants but harsh bhogle i am sure is known to everyone he is very very knowledgeable his theoretical knowledge of cricket is perfect he must have practiced something also but sachin tendulkar is certainly a better skilled because he has practiced the skill to the extent so that is what makes the skilling mo much more important and in this context whether it is somebody has mentioned i think uh, professor bora that whether it is a pandemic or no pandemic skilling has to go on yes that is what was identified that's why 2015 the world your skill day I mean, since 2015, World Youth Skill Day is being mm, celebrated. But at the same time, the skill has to aspire the youth. The youth aspiration is very, very important. At this point of time, we can also uh, must not forget that during this time of pandemic only, since we, we, I mean, uh, I think last August. the national education policy was rolled out and in the national education policy we are all aware that for the first time vocational education was given a prime importance 
and while giving that prime importance the vocational education has been embedded in various levels starting from the school level to higher education the national education policy has uh, uh, has proposed that skill education or vocational education has to be embedded in the formal education so there has to be an uh, merging of the formal education vocational education along with the formal education the reason being that uh, the national education policy it has uh, rightly identified that the reason was that the vocational education prior to that prior to this skill mission which started was not aspirational for the youth because they could not grow to a level even if they were very very skilled and that was identified very correctly by the mentor of this university as marcus has mentioned in his uh, opening uh, address that dr joshi and mrs joshi in 2006 they identified the strength of the swiss skill and they thought of transferring that swiss skill to india so that empowered the youth much before the world youth skill day was being celebrated they thought of this and they uh, that aspiration level is very very important so with that objective they started and in 2015 bsdc came into being at the same time this identification that aspiration was also recognized by our educators and our government and such that ugc the university grants commission came up with pure degree level skill education and introduced the bivoc degree we immediately grabbed that opportunity and this uni the bsdc which was the center which was also objective the objective of the center was to skill the youth but that got converted into an university so that it can offer degrees the youth aspiring youths can be nurtured from much much lower level and that can be brought to a level where they can have the full fledged degree in vocational education no compromise was made as marcus has already mentioned so i am not repeating the facilities what we have in the university that medu has already presented in her opening slides so no compromise was made in procuring the machines no compromise was made in imparting the skills the best of the trainers were hired and these trainers were also trained and mentored by swiss trainers as marcus had shown that more than 80 trainers were sent by our knowledge partner joshi foundation i would like to thank the ceo here once again for this great initiative that you had taken and for the support that you have provided us we were lucky of course that we had a knowledge partner like you but since we have already done this and what is the result of this the result of this is that we are producing very confident and competent workforce our students who complete one semester with us as per the bivoc uh, curriculum I, i i i hope uh, all of you are aware or most of you are aware that in bivoc curriculum as uh, in the swiss uh, uh, dual system as was mentioned by marcus in bivoc curriculum also it has been mandated that there has to be 50% must be in the university imparting the skills training and other 50% has to be on job training in industry through internships and this internships when our students go for internships to various industries the industries grab them and all of them they get stipends when they uh, undergo internships in the industries so that is the sort of uh, training that we provide because we had a mentor like dr joshi we had the support of joshi foundation but we have moved forward now the government is also supporting that so i would say 
that in the new normal, probably uh, Dr. Boda also mentioned that one or two skills university is not enough. It is necessary today that we should have replicate this model of skills universities which we have, especially BSU, I will say, which we should replicate all across the country. Then only we shall have sufficient skilled personnel to actually satisfy the requirement that our country has, the vast country, the great country has. Another point which uh, many of uh, my pre previous speakers have uh, tried to address, I would also like to share their same opinion that uh, the skill training, imparting skill training through online mode is a very, very difficult job. We have tried, as uh, Dr. Padihar mentioned, that prepare videos, we did that, but practice is practice. So to some extent it is possible, well, uh, some of the examples which you had given may be possible, a plumber may try to do something, but under the direct mentoring of a trainer when he does that, I do not think it can certainly be done when he tries that at home. For some of the advanced modes, of course, it is very, very even more difficult. We tried to impart that through some simulation, simulated mode, but that simulated mode again will require the receiver also to have the same software so that we can deliver that. Otherwise, it is very, very difficult. So skill training, we must think of something. Maybe it is a, a challenge before us to develop some skilling technique which can deliver the skill training or the simulations at an affordable rate and a better simulated version for the uh, trainees to adopt and apply. With these few words, I once again thank you all for joining us on behalf of BSU and say once again greet you all on this great day of World Youth Skill Day. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, sir, for your valuable address. We will now move on to the question from the participants. Uh, the first question is from uh, Kanika Dhawan to Marcus Giminer, sir. Sir, how can we prepare our youth skilled forces for increasing demand in India and in various parts of the world, particularly in this COVID period? This is a pretty difficult question. Um, there are two things. The, the demand is high uh, all over India, also in the, in, the, in the rest of the world for professional workers. Uh, we have to make, um, design certain levels of vocational education and training. Uh, when Mr. Mrs. Uh, Professor Neharia was speaking about the huge numbers we have to train in India. We can't do it all over uh, Skills University, even if you had 10 or 20 of them. So even the level uh, is very important, the entrance level. So uh, I have the feeling if we create different level of schools uh, that we have also as so a ground duty worker for basic works in, in the mechanical workshop, then we, we, we can produce higher numbers. But uh, if I compare it to our training in, in BSDU, uh, this, this is the pity. Uh, we have a wide and a very good training, and, but these workers probably won't remain as a, as a uh, ground staff. They will, they will continue every year. But this is required to have uh, some, uh, you know, uh, higher level HODs. Uh, we brought out already uh, quite a lot of, of good um, HODs. And one I heard is already uh, a GM. But uh, we, we have to think, if we want to think in mass, we have to think in, on other levels as well. And the pandemic, that is a, a worse case. That, that is a, what, what it's, a, you know, for practical training, it's required to go to the workshop, 
it's required to, uh, to, to hands-on training, to do it together with a trainer. Otherwise, if you watch just a video, it's not the same. Uh, of course, it's far away from do it by your own hands several times and then you know, yes, I know it. So pandemic, pandem pandemic it's, uh, it's also a different case. Like I said, uh, I would, uh, you know, uh, move it away from pandemic, concentrate on the future. Hopefully, uh, of course, pandemic will come back some when we, ha we have to count, uh, be aware every time. And um, the online courses, they will help to prevent uh, and to fill up some gaps during some time, but uh, to discuss how to continue together with the government and other schools uh, and to design new courses, we have to continue with this way of, of training. Of course, the, Beside of VET, there are plenty of other courses where it's not required to go to the school. We can, we can manage that. But uh, this is uh, one of the uh, important and uh, also difficult tasks. How can we train this mass in India? So I, I haven't really an answer, but uh, I uh, like to discuss it with my colleagues as well, please. Well, the question is open uh, if anyone wants to take it further. All esteemed panelists. I believe Marcus has already uh, covered the aspects. It is, it is actually a very open question. And the, it, it cannot be given. I mean, sort of a uh, problem which can only we, we can have a optimized solution, but cannot have a closed form solution in terms of mathematics as we call it, you know. So I think an optimized solution as Marcus has presented, that is the solution. And uh, of course, I would also like to share his uh, optimism that yes, we must be ready for the adverse effect of the end, which we already had, and it may be there for the pandemic. But we must not only be bogged down by the pandemic and its effect also. We must think of much beyond that also, because the world is will grow much, much uh, beyond that. So that aspect also we must not forget, being too much bogged down with the effect of pandemic at this point of time. Well, thank you, sir. And thank you, uh, Marcus, sir, for your wonderful reply. The next question is from Varun Dood to Madhu Parhar, ma'am. Ma'am, how feasible you see new technologies like virtual labs or VR, AR as an alter alternative of physical training? Okay, um, virtual reality, all of you, you know, these are some of them like, you all have these robotics and 3D printing and internet of things, virtual reality, all those things. These are all the disruptive technologies. And national education policy has talked about, I think, given two pages, the 2020 national education policy, which Dr. Chaudhary also talked about, but that vocational education has been highlighted. Similarly, disruptive technologies has been highlighted in two pages. And all these things, they want that uh, uh, education should take it forward. So either school education or higher education, it did along with online education. So there are complete, I think, four or five pages which talks about the national education policy on all these um, uh, disruptive technologies. Virtual reality is one of them. And a very good example was given by Dr. Chaudhary about the uh, simulators. And we all know flight simulators. How do these people, they learn how to fly an aircraft? It is all done on a simulator. Uh, many of the, the in health sector, it has been now, it has come. Uh, many of them, it is a virtual reality based. That actually, what is simulator? These are all virtual reality based uh, technologies. So these technology simulators are training for the anesthesiologist. Mining industry, I was just reading somewhere. 
mining industry you go deep into the mines and if a person is not skilled uh we are de- endangering the life of that person that miner so the mining industry is using this virtual reality uh thing and there are many many more uh, uh more sectors which they are using it because these virtual reality tools they offer immersive experiences you just got immersed into what you are learning i just want to give one example and then i'll close yes virtual reality is possible and one a it is quite expensive like if we see all these experiments going on in disney world and even on uh, in india the the television shows on they are spending the commercials they are spending so much of money but in education education sector when it comes we don't spend that much of money because definitely it cost a lot of huge amount financially but very important is how teachers can do it that i mean teachers you need entirely different again skills to create to learn these virtual reality tools and to create these experiments but what teachers can do is the most important and semka has created a platform uh, 360 degree virtual reality platform with uh, with the support of iit kharagpur and then we did a very recently last month only a first experiment with the ravanshya university uh, dr niharika will be knowing because uh, she belongs not belongs for she has done her education in uh, in orissa we did with this uh, experiment with ravanshya university teacher educators they created their content their videos using this 3 degree uh virtual reality platform now we are making it much more advanced which i mean everything is learning so we learn from this platform we are moving forward having more applications into it and we will try to do something so most important part is if i have answered your question and how teachers they use these virtual reality platform to know they are quite expensive but this is going to well uh, well uh, thank you ma'am uh, there is a small technical glitch from your side uh, thank you for your reply ma'am uh, to varun dud i hope the question the reply suffices your answer no thought well thank you ma'am for your reply to that uh, the next question is uh, from professor niharika ma'am uh, the question is from mr shambhu dayal gupta ma'am what all activities and opportunities you will suggest for the youth engagement during this pandemic uh, dr niharika ma'am well uh, till then uh, dr niharika ma'am joins back i would invite uh, the forum from the open question those who have raised your hand uh, you can unmute your mic and ask your question please uh, dr vinit kumar jha sir uh, this uh, my question is from uh, mr marcus that madhu uh, parihar has a discuss that by 2025 a lot of changing is going to take place in uh, skills and uh, digitization digitization will come uh, in picture in all the sectors certainly this will uh, be observed in manufacturing sectors also so already bsd is copying uh, from switzerland swiss concepts has been brought uh, to bsd So in what way my question is that in what way uh, agencies or governments are thinking switzer then for implementation of those digitization in manufacturing sectors especially thank you mr cha for this question uh, actually we are uh, not copying uh, this is uh, the, we we tried to to do that at the beginning 8 years ago 
But uh, very quick, uh, we were aware that it, uh, we have to adapt the system, the Swiss dual system, just take out the, the good inputs which are applicable or you know useful in India. So there is there is no no copy. Um, if you uh, talk about the, the future, about the new regulations and manufacturing skills, we are we are facing in, in Switzerland exactly the, the same uh, problems. So the uh, there is uh, almost every third year there is a review to each and and uh, to to each skills and to each profession. So they have to rebuild, rethink their courses, their program, and adapt it because uh, nowadays uh, technical issues and technical solutions are so quick. Uh, then some uh, copies were kicked out and some news are coming in. So this is an um, ongoing process. We need to adapt it and modify all the time. So um, I'm sure next time I, I will come to, to Jaipur, we will sit together and uh, look with each another uh, department, which direction we, we have to go, what have we to adapt to do not uh, lose what, what we built up in the past. But uh, I'm sure uh, we, are, we are still on the right way, and, uh, but it's an ongoing, ongoing session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, sir. Uh, we lost the connection with Professor Madhu Parhar, ma'am. Uh, if you are back, ma'am, if you want to add something, you may add to your questions. Else we can move on to the next question. Thank you very much. No, uh, I, I'm through that question answer. So you can move forward, please. Right. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, anyone else, if want to uh, ask the question, they can unmute your mic. I can see some of the hands are raising. Hilal Mala or Mr. Sandeep. Seeing the positive of time, we'll just take one or two questions more. Thank you. Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello, sir. Where are you from? Yeah, yeah. I'm from Pune. I'm uh, Professor Sandeep Tapse, uh, working as an assistant professor uh, in travel and tourism department. Welcome, sir. Your questions, please. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my question is related to the employability because uh, lots of uh, uh, students are coming to the admissions, but they are uh, very uh, worried about the employability in future. Like uh, uh, in India or uh, all over the world, uh, we are having the predictions that uh, in near future, 2025, 20, uh, we are not uh, coming over to the pandemic situation. So how to counsel them? Right. I would request Mr. Janak, sir, if you could take the question, please. Janak, sir, or any other eminent panelist member? Yeah, yeah, please, please. This question is to all of the panelists. Can you repeat the question, please? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My question is that uh, we are not overcoming the pandemic situation till 2025 as for the uh, prediction of uh, WTO, uh, sorry, WHO. So how to counsel the students who are coming for the admissions? I think uh, this uh, is the, the global uh, question. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the visitor economy or the, the tourism sector is facing right now, but uh, it it will there will be some uh, future for this uh, industry, but it depends on uh, how we control the, the pandemic. So it all depends on uh, the various uh, how, how the the pandemic is uh, controlled uh, over the years, uh, how uh, we react or maybe how we uh, make the the environment safe and uh, how uh, vaccines are, uh, react, react uh, to the pandemic situation. So there are various uh, other factors involving this issue because even in Sri Lanka, we have uh, the, this problem because most of the, the students asking uh, students who are in, in the, the tourism sector, asking this question when, when we are going for the jobs when we are going for the on the job training so will this be a possible uh, avenue but uh, we 
uh, say them uh, don't lose the hopes and uh, there will be definitely there will be a solution for this problem and uh, they can keep on uh, because now uh, in sri lanka most of the hotels with this uh, safety uh, and secured environment they they have opened they have opened and uh, they have put some quarantine centers and various other they have found some other alternative uh, ways and means uh, to uh, to the livelihood because some of the people working in the hot hospitality sector hotel industry they have come up with various innovative solutions uh, suppose uh, for example uh, starting their own business starting their own pastry shop starting their own uh, some other uh, alternative uh, method of delivering their services there uh, there could be some innovations in the in the sectors and i think uh, we uh, have to keep our hopes thank you well thank you so much sir uh, ladies and gentlemen now we are in the end part of our global conversation and now in the end i would like to invite mr saurav mishra from semca new delhi and dr rajdeep dev from bsdu jaipur to enlighten us with the outcome of the month long bsdu skill carnival 2021 and deliver the vote of thanks and the closing remarks over to you sir is it audible yes sir yeah. yes yeah. yes you are very much so thank you dr kapoor uh, on behalf of uh, commonwealth educational media center for asia i would like to thank all participants joining this panel discussion from various part of the world uh, i remember when uh, a month back we were brainstorming on the topic for this panel discussion on the eve of world youth skill day we found that uh, the topic skills for youth employment in new normal will be the most appropriate in current context and today valuable inputs from uh, from our eminent panelists have given a new perspective to the skill ecosystem to adopt also we started this uh, skill carnival on world yoga day on 21st of june and these 24 days of uh, rigorous the uh, skill and the technical workshops hackathon quiz competitions and the series of talk shows been so productive and encouraging for all of us and as we know thousands of youths across the world participated in these events and they have been certified and awarded accordingly also so soon uh, Uh, Rajdeep sir will be announcing the uh, winners also for these uh, competitions and all, and they will be receiving the cash prizes also. So foremost, I would like to thank my director, Dr. Madhu Parhar, madam, for being continuous source of guidance, providing her valuable inputs, and mentoring this month-long skill carnival event. Thank you, ma'am. uh next i will like to extend my thanks to dr choudhury president bsdu for associating with simca in organizing this program because of active advertisement and facilitation support from bsdu this program reached 2000 of youth aspirants across globe i would also like to express my gratitude to dr niharika vohra for her constant support and association with simca we recently completed a month long series of workshop with bseu teaching faculties and we will look forward for such associate more such association in future also i will like to thank dr uh, mr janaka jalath also the uh, deputy director general tvc sri lanka for taking out time from his busy schedule to attend this program thank you sir because of his support simca is associating for first time with sri lankan government in skill in skill domain i would also uh, i will like to extend my thanks and gratitude to mr marcus ceo of joshi foundation for his presence in this panel discussion and on behalf of simca we will look forward that uh, to joining hands with exclusively with joshi foundation in skill and livelihood sectors in future so 
I will like to thank everyone once again, and I will look forward for a bigger celebration on World Youth Skill Day in 2022, which will be, I hope and believe, will be COVID free. Thank you, everyone. Well, thank you, sir. And uh, I would also request, meanwhile, all the participants to please switch on your uh, web camera for a while so that we can take a very happy memories out of all these global conversations. For a while, you can switch on audio camera so that we can take the screenshot of the same. And meanwhile, I would request Dr. Rajdeep Dev, sir, to address us and deliver his words. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Dr. Kapoor. Uh, so we started, you know, like as mentioned by Mr. Saurabh Nisha, we started with uh, World Yoga Day and we are concluding on World Youth Skill Day. Uh, this is the version two of PhD Skill Carnival. Uh, we all started this uh, just to encourage and celebrate the youth skill on 2020, uh, the first version of PhD Skill Carnival. And, they, uh, and this year, with the support of uh, SEMCA, we are able to scale up. Last year, it was in week-long celebrations. Uh, this time, it's more than three weeks that we celebrated through various events. Uh, so, uh, the many people need to be acknowledged uh, because, you know, like holding a 24 days event, you need support from all corners and you can't forget them uh, at your validity functions. So, but keeping in mind that we already shifted our schedule time, so I will be very brief and I will be very briefly go through uh, the slides. The slides I decided keeping in mind, you know, like I shouldn't forget each and every one because without their support, it was not possible. So we started on 21st with a motto that will reach each and every stakeholder of the global skill ecosystem. And believe me, at the end of today's BH and uh, the concluding ceremony of PhD Skill Carnival, uh, I can tell you that it's not that, you know, like we have touched the aspirational districts, you know, last last to last week, we had a skill workshops with uh, a budding entrepreneur from the West City. Uh, the district administrations also joined us and they were so happy that, you know, like somebody sitting at the near to the national capital are catering their need and all. Uh, we also have a video making uh, workshop this week, this week only and almost but almost participants from, I guess, like 29 states of India has participated in that. And that itself shows that well, there is a need for, you know, like such type of uh, skill workshops. So we all started on 21st. Uh, thanks are due to the chairman, RSLDC and secretary, uh, government of Rajasthan, uh, Madhu Ma'am, and our president, sir, which joined us in the inaugurations. With their support, with their uh, blessings, we all started this journey of 24 days of skilling India and reaching to the unreachable. Uh, we started with the skill workshops. Uh, we started on, I guess, 22nd with this, but many such skill workshop was conducted. That's why I took out the date, because if I could recollect, probably we conducted six or seven similar workshops, only because of the party request from the participants. Uh, the other important aspect of that skill carnival was expert webinar because at BHDU we believe that the education has to be you know uh, multifolded. It's not what you know; it's all about how much you know. Uh, through these expert workshops, we try to cater that need. We bring people across uh, various disciplines to ex uh, address our audience. So we started with an appreciative inquiry, and I believe. We, Yesterday only we ended up with a motivational story uh, from India's uh, winning journey of skill championship, world skill championship, where mentors who has mentored the participants for the water technology uh, trades, they joined us in this. Uh, the other important aspects of this skill carnival was try skills on that we choose different uh, trades of skills. This is normally two and three hours uh, hands-on skill training where, you know, like the, our master trainer or uh, expert who has uh, uh, delivered those sessions within two and three hours, they try to give the participants a quick fix type of thing so that, you know, like they can also from novice to uh, develop some kind of expertise in that particular domain. Uh, 
we also catered uh, the need of you know like we would also like to know from all the hr heads so people from seven time zone joined us and they discuss and deliberate on the need of 21st century skills and particularly one important uh, model they discussed was acdc that means after covid and before covid what are the expectation from all the hr heads that was uh, discussed and deliberated and uh, from the participations response that we received i can tell you that everybody reaped the benefit uh, we continued with our expert webinar uh, india's leading leading design thinking coach joined us uh, I, I don't know, like when we received around 1500 registration for this workshop, I was discussing with sort of that how to cater the need, you know, like in Zoom, more than 100 people is become a very big mess, keeping in mind that you need to accommodate, you need to uh, address their skilling need also. This All this has to be hands-on because this is the paramount parameter that we set for ourselves. So when we conducted the CPP, we kept that 30 participants should be maximum there so that we can cater their individual need. Uh, so that's how we have conducted these workshops. We also want to listen from the schools people. So we have conducted one event with the principals of the schools, how they are adapting the national education policy and the skilling need, and particularly the no bags day, how they are preparing for that no bags day, which is very much highlighted in the national education policy. Uh, around that, the discussion was there. Uh, then we open our PhD skill facility with plethora of skill workshops. We started with 3D printing. Uh, then we also have an HR conclave, keeping in mind that people should know about this pandemic and what is the way ahead and how to tackle this. Uh, all the eminent people from the country uh, joined us. Uh, we have parties, uh, we have a pan uh, esteemed panelists from United States as well as the UK. And we, most importantly, we have uh, the man who lead the fight of COVID in Rajasthan, uh, Dr. Sudhir Bhandari, the principal of SMS Medical College. Because if you could recollect in the early days, SMS College has lead the India's leading fight coming up with the medicine and all those things they experimented out. So sir, uh, Dr. Bhandari, Dr. Bhandari was articulated all those things. And he also discussed that there is a need for data science and similar domain for the healthcare workers. So they can't limit themselves with the things they are doing. They need to look beyond telemedicine and other things are coming up and particularly the counseling aspects. So I believe like we have, when we plan this, we want to know about all those things. Our basket was full when we ended up after one and a half hour of discussions. Uh, as I already mentioned, we opened all those things, our skill workshop from the PhDU. So these are the two master uh, trainers from Bharti Skill Development University who delivered this in the very important manufacturing segment. I have a personal association, particularly about this expert webinar. People came here to listen to Mr. Uh, Dr. Solonki from IIT Bombay, but they left with a pledge that they are going to adopt solar technology in their life. So that was very emotional, that was very personal, because this is the connect Professor Sulanki was able to make with all the participants. Uh, moving ahead, uh, I already told you we have very many prior skill events. One is with our budding chef from Harthi Skill Development University, where he has shown his uh, cooking skills with our participants. Uh, we also, our principals from various skill schools have joined our celebrations and they shared their expertise. Mustaqsa's motivational story was had a very personal connect with all the participants. Uh, as I already mentioned, this is the skill workshops where participants from almost all the states of the country has participated. Uh, probably people are also looking for the job, so they want to have their son. But anyway, uh, I hope participants are able to reap the benefits. Uh, we had these workshops. I, I, I lost count how many workshops we conducted. Uh, he was on special demand. So I hope he is there. Thank you, sir. Uh, as already mentioned, mentor from uh, last year's uh, World Skill Championship, uh, Ms. Ruchi Parik. She has mentored the guy who has won gold medal for India. Uh, and then we also have a Mr. Arpit Sharma and our very own Dr. Ritika joined them in the discussions. This is our last trial skill sessions today that we have just, you know, like I think we started at 3 p.m. It ended around 4.30, then we started these global conversations. Uh, so that was about how you can make a birdhouse out of the staff available with you. 
uh, our expert master trainer and trainers has demonstrated that starting from the design to coming up with the finished products. And finally, thank you already, Saurav has extended thanks. I, on behalf of my university, also would like to extend our heartfelt thanks to each one of you. Your insight, your experience has added a lot of value and you have just, you know, like concluded our world in skill day and inspired us that we should have a bigger and better uh, 2022 PhD skill carnival. But I can't end without thanking one, you know, like Dr. Joshi, because we all are living his dream. At BSDU, we all living his dream. And whatever we are doing, we are keeping always in mind that whatever vision he, or the missions that he has set out for the Bharti Skill Development University, we all should cater to that need. Uh, believe me, this is probably the only university in the country where each and every student has received some kind of scholarship or financial aid. You can't find any university in the world probably like where each and every student has received some kind of assistance from this gentleman. So we are uh, we are living this uh, vision of Dr. Joshi. And particularly, Mrs. Joshi is also after after his demise. Mr. Joshi, uh, Mrs. Joshi was also extending uh, the same care for each and every employee, as well as each and every student of this university. And this is well taken care by the their uh, peer of Dr. Joshi, Mr. Jain Joshi, and Mr. Abhishek Joshi, who is also supporting us in all endeavors. So, with this, uh, I would like to thank each and everyone. And I would like to apologize to each participant because I could see many of you have raised your hands, but we always want to be in time. That's how each and every event of the Skill Carnival was designed uh, and executed. We always try to limit on time. So we are extremely sorry, but probably in some other skill workshop or some other expert webinar, definitely will give you an opportunity to interact with our esteemed guests. So with this, I would like to conclude. Thank you so much for being with us. We enjoyed your company, a lot of learning, and we'll cherish this for the rest of our lives. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you all. Thank you once again. The global...